it's been a few months since my last video, and that's partially because I've been busy with my real job, but I've also been waiting to introduce this, which is gonna be a new project we're gonna be covering here on the channel, which you've probably already seen in the thumbnail and title of this video, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get this cover off. This is a 1991 BMW M5, and more importantly, it is my M5. Of the roughly 12,000 of these hand-built machines that BMW produced, only 1,678 of them ever made it to North America. And this is the only E34 M5 I've ever seen in person, and I had the privilege of being able to purchase it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a walk around this car and check out everything that's good, and also everything that's gonna need a little bit of love. So walking around this thing, it is in overall very good shape. Uh, it's very straight, very few door dings. Uh, although the ones that there are, you can see someone tried to repair those and did not get a paint that actually matched the Alpine White 2 that this car is. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, we see a little more of that as we get around to the other side. Uh, down here, we have a little bit of splitting on our splitter. <laughs> so. I'll have to learn how to do repairs on stuff like this. That shouldn't be anything too crazy, uh, but that'll be a bit of work for sure. Fog lights, also cracked. Uh, I've repaired those before. Got video on the channel. I've got more lenses that I'll be putting in this thing. Um, this badge, I covered it in masking tape because it is turning to goo. I've never seen that before, but it was sticking to the cover I have on this car. Um, so that was fun. Also, this high beam doesn't match and it's really ugly and I don't like it. Uh, but that's all right because I got a set of European Hella Smileys uh, that we'll be restoring and putting in this car. So walking around to this side, you can see more of these little dings that were touched up lovingly. <laughs> got some more there. Um, but overall, I mean, it's straight. It looks good. The wheels are particularly in great shape. None of them have any curbing. Uh, and I'm a huge fan of these Style 21s on the M system wheels. Uh, I think they're really cool. I think 17s are the perfect size for this chassis. Coming around to the back, not really sure what was going on here with this rear quarter. It definitely has been repainted. Uh, so that was likely some sort of collision damage. There was nothing on the Carfax, so it couldn't have been anything too severe. Uh, but I am assuming that there's probably a little Bondo somewhere in there. It doesn't sound like it. Uh, and I couldn't find anything from the inside of the car that looked like a dent that had been filled. So I'm not totally sure about that. But yeah, this rear quarter doesn't quite match the same white as the rest of the car. It's very close, but you can see this line here where it was painted. It's unfortunate. Um, maybe I'll have someone respray that for me in the future just to make it all tie together. Rear bumper's in good shape. I do have all the little covers for the tow hooks. Those are hard to find. I'm not missing them, so we're good there. Uh, no exhaust at the moment. We'll get to that. And then coming back around this side, it is a really good looking car, I have to say. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look inside. So inside this car, um, it's a little bit dusty, but the leather is in absolutely fantastic condition all the way around. Um, I'm really happy with the condition of the interior of this thing. Uh, it looks really good in this black. It's also the two plus two seating arrangement, so it's not a five seater like the other E34s. So you get this cool little center console that comes open and then more storage back there. I think in some cars that's cooled with the air conditioner. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case in this thing. Uh, I'd have to check that out. Things are a little bit pulled apart up here. I'm missing the radio. That's a little bit of a common theme around this car, unfortunately. I'm also missing the in-car phone, as well as the amp in the back. Among a few other little odds and ends, like the owner's manual, that kind of sucks, because uh, those are next to impossible to find. Uh, it's got the MTech 2 wheel, which I'm sure was installed by a previous owner somewhere along the way. Got the M gauge cluster with your oil temperature instead of the fuel economy gauge, which is really cool. Um, but other than that, it's really standard E34 stuff. Got the sport seats. They look great. They're very supportive, very comfortable. Even the rear seats are more supportive than other standard E34 seats that I've been in. They feel sporty and it's kind of cool. Uh, and the headrests are also nice to have. Got your own cigarette lighter for the rear seat passengers. All in all, a really cool car. 
But with all that being said, uh, why do I as a 21 year old own this car? Let's go ahead and pop the hood and we'll see. Uh, one last really nice thing about this car. Look how this door closes. Oh, that's so satisfying. It's so smooth. Wow. All right, under the hood, what do we got? Oh, nothing. Um, absolutely nothing. No exhaust, no engine, no transmission, no drive shaft. Huh, that's fun. So I do actually have all of these components and they're currently inside right now. Let's go check those out because it's actually cooking out here right now. All right, so here in the garage, here is the S38 B36 that originally came out of the M5. It is a derivative of the engine that was in the original M1, which is pretty cool. And it's also an update to the S38 B35 that was in the E28 M5. So makes a bit more power, a bit more torque, and has a few hundred cubic centimeters more displacement. I forget if that's just stroke or if it's bore. I'm sure Google could tell you if you were interested in that. Um, but I do have the complete engine. I have all the parts that came out of the car. There's a bunch of stuff in the trunk still. Um, someone was tinkering with this a little bit. So I guess at this point, let's go ahead and talk about why this is out, supposedly. So the story I was given for this car was that a very passionate owner had purchased it. It was something that they had wanted for a long time, but it was leaking oil profusely and it also needed a clutch. So they took it to a shop um, the shop proceeded to drop the transmission, decided they didn't really know what they were doing, and it got passed to another shop who then pulled the engine uh, and held the car hostage for 10 years. Supposedly, it's a little bit hard to believe. Why would you go through the effort of pulling one of these big honking engines out of these cars? I don't really know, um, but I was willing to take that risk on this car because it, they don't turn up frequently, and when they do, they're a lot more than what I paid for this one. So we'll see what we end up with. Um, the engine does turn over. I don't know anything about it other than that. It has around 130 to 140,000 miles on it. I'm planning on starting to tear down this engine, not completely, um, probably just valve cover gasket and oil pan. And maybe we'll take the upper portion of the head off because the head's actually two pieces. Um, we're gonna go through. We're gonna investigate everything. We're gonna give everything a really good inspection. And then I'm gonna reseal everything because it's very clear that this thing was actually leaking oil profusely. And if there's a shop that really wants to charge storage fees and a lot of hours for a car, sure, they could pull an engine out and try to reseal it with the engine out of the car and argue that that's easier. That might've been what happened. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's not anything severe internally that's wrong with this engine because there's not much out there on these cars. There's not a whole lot of people working on them because there's not many of them. So we'll see what we end up with and maybe this project will end up being useful for someone else out there who might have one of these cars that they're working on themselves. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a big learning experience. It's gonna be hard on the wallet, um, but you know what? It'll be exciting and when this thing is actually on the road, not if, but when it is on the road, it's gonna be really cool, it's gonna be really fun. I'm gonna have a really great time with it and I hope that you all will really enjoy watching that process as we go along as well. So with all that being said, um, if you know anything about these cars, about these engines, please let me know down in the comments below. It's hard to find information on them like I was saying. Any tips, any advice, I'd love to hear it. I will be reading your comments. And while you're down there, make sure to go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos on this project or any of the other projects and work that I do here on the channel. I'm really excited to dive into this. In the next video, we are gonna get started uh, tearing this motor down a little bit. But anyways, I'll catch all you guys in the next video and thank you for watching.